Hello everyone and welcome to Marco Plays Through Some Pixel Tactics Online. I'm not sure whether you guys want commentated content or not commentated content, so I'll leave it to you guys in the description down below to tell me and I'll change that as soon as possible. So uh, we recently actually released two new things. Number one, we released a new leader, Malandrax, which allows him to get more orbs and that's pretty cool because he can play a lot of orders in a single turn. So I made a cool combo OTK-esque Exodia-ish deck uh, that aims to one-shot an enemy for like 15 or 17 damage times two using a Pistolier Twin Blade combo. Um, but I'm not sure if it's refined enough. So that's where the second thing comes in because we just released World 2 of the single player campaign. So Pixel Tactics Online is not a fully PvP game. You have some PvE content. Uh, and in these worlds, I get to, you know, just fight a bunch of decks that have their own unique strategies and whatnot, of course, since they all have different leaders. So I guess this is a good opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. I get to show you guys some of the new stuff that we put into the game while also testing out my new deck. So let's try this new awesome deck. It's called Malandrax's Awesome Deck, and we'll go in there. So as with most of these commentated videos, I'm going to be talking about the strategy behind the decisions I make so that you can see how tactical pixel tactics online can be. So mulligans are very interesting at the very start. And my deck's focused around using a combo to deal around 15, 20 to 30 something damage to the enemy leader. Note that most leaders have 16 to 24 HP, so that usually one shots them. Here's my problem though. Eric has this really annoying ability that makes it so that I can't target my attacks. If ever I attack with something, it hits a random thing instead. So this might be a problem for my OTK, which requires me to hit the leader. So instead, the way to beat Eric would be to clear off all of his units and just beat him when he doesn't have any more units left to summon, or if his entire field's filled with corpses, and I can guarantee that it hits him. So that means early on, I need to play on the defensive and look for my removal. Magic Student's pretty good because it allows me to search for removal. This is actually a really strong hand. Druid is a really good uh, Vanguard unit because it has Death Proof and Intercept. So I can block off Eric's ranged attack, which he has. And it also doesn't die to orders like Assassin and Lancer. So it'll be pretty good. Apparently there was a timer. Well, anyway, here's the thing. I wasn't gonna mulligan anything in that hand anyway. So yeah, I, I went over the timer. But that's fine, but that's fine. This was actually an intended start, so I already had my plan in mind. I put the druid in the middle in front of me because it defends my weak, weak 420 face. And then I will play Magic Student here because Magic Student allows me to scry through the deck. Scry is a keyword that sounds exactly as it... Well, it does what it sounds like it does. It lets me pick up the top two cards of my deck and then put one of them into my hand and then I put the other card back. Huh, Mastermind. Mastermind is an interesting card. Mostly because... It allows me to orb boost. So I was originally going to play it here until I remembered that it allows me to duplicate cards in my hand. So I, maybe it's better off for me to draw. So this was my mistake. Instead of um, playing all these cards first, I should have drawn a card before doing anything. If you're planning to draw, it's usually good to draw first. So I'll, I'll make sure to keep that in mind next time. But now I have a really good Vanguard that protects against Eric's, well, ranged attack. We'll see what he'll do in response. Uh-huh. 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 That's a really annoying board. So this deck strategy seems to be to flood the board with units. And then... Oh, yeah. Okay. So the, the Cursed Knight has a keyword called counter. And if I attack it, he attacks back. Because usually in Pixel Tactics Online, uh, when you attack, they don't attack back. So this deck just makes it so that I accidentally attack units I wouldn't usually attack. That's pretty interesting. So I know what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna need to reserve the Twin Blade. So my plan is to play this and then draw two cards. So since that's my plan, I should draw cards first. Ooh, okay, that changes my plan. No, it doesn't, no, no it doesn't. Because Druid, okay, so originally this card, the Lancer is pretty good if you summon it in the flank because it makes all of your units in the Vanguard deathproof. 
However, my druid's already death proof, so I don't need to do that. So let's continue with my earlier plan of drawing cards. And there's another reflector. And then let's put a mastermind into the hand. Oh, this will be really good. Oh, he moved that guy. All right. So even if it's like this, if I attack the doppelganger, it will randomly decide the target between the illusionist, the doppelganger, and the summoner. So moving that curse knight back isn't that bad. Now that the curse knight is in the rear, its ability is now vanguard counter, and that's pretty good. Because that means if I hit anything here, they'll attack back, and that's not something I want. So I may want to start drawing my deck for some removal. So my plan is to double summon the reflectors in the rear and then draw a card or maybe it's draw one card and then one reflector because i want to keep a reflector in my hand to prevent Eric from utterly destroying me so i think the plan is to draw two and then summon a reflector let's see if that changes nope the mastermind is pretty good so mastermind allows me to cancel orders so if they play an order it j negates that order entirely and reflectors allow me to negate attacks entirely with a mastermind in the middle i can keep duplicating these two cards in my hand and keep playing them so that the key essentially gets to do nothing so since my plan hasn't changed i'll draw one more and see if I can summon a unit that's better. And there's the Pistolier. So this is this is where you see my combo. The Twin Blade uh, gives the Forerunner, which means the unit in front of it, double attack. And the Pistolier can attack for free. So that means I can attack twice for free. It's pretty good. But for now, let's put the Reflector. So it's usually common uh, practice that you place rear units behind your leader, uh, mostly because you want to protect them. Uh, because if you place them here or here in the sides, the moment the vanguard and flank falls, they'll get to your rear units. And rear units are usually really powerful and have awesome spells. Backlash is one of those powerful spells that allows me to deal damage to a hero equal to its attack. So the doppelganger would take three and the illusionist would take four. It's pretty good. Oh, by the way, you can double tap to um, zoom in and see a more detailed explanation of the effects. But since I've played a lot, I am not going to do that. I'm just going to explain it to you guys. So it's going to end my turn. And Eric's going to be on the switch. It means he's going to take two turns straight, which he does right now. That was an interesting set of moves. And there's the trap. So I don't know what that trap is. It could be any one of the three traps. It could be a statistician, which negates a spell. It could be the reflector, which negates an attack. Or the mastermind, which negates an order. That's really bad. I'm not sure what it is, but let's try it. So let's test it. Is it the statistician? No, it's not, since my spell went through. This is very good. So with that in mind, I get to add the treasure hunter to my hand, and let's play this. Maybe it's the uh, mastermind. No, my order went through, which means it's only one case left, and that's the reflector. Now, this is a really good um, set of circumstances, because that means I can attack with this. So why would I attack with the druid? Attacking with the druid is really simple, because if I attack any one of these guys, it's going to reflect back for at least two damage, because that's four, three, or two damage back on me. But with the... What the Reflector does is it just negates my attack and then bounces the same damage to me. So this guarantees that I'll only take two damage. So I'll even attack the, the Illusionist just to prove it. Yup, that was a Reflector. So I'll take two damage. And that's fine. In Pixel Tactics Online, your units don't die until the end of the current wave. So even if he has eight damage here with these two units, he'll have to pump all eight of that damage into my Druid. Which is really good, since I can just easily resurrect it or do a bunch of other crazy stuff. So that's pretty good. Getting his order out of the way is super good. Because um, if, if you guys don't know, those those trappers, those uh, reflectors, they stop my OTK real bad. So let's do more treasure hunter drawing. Treasure hunter's pretty good. I activate Pot of Greed. That's essentially what it is. And there's my removal. So the fighter is a pretty powerful unit because not only is it a good body, it, o it also does uh, Thunder 5, which deals 5 damage to an entire column. Oh, and I got my doppelganger. Okay, here we go. This is why my, my deck's so late game. See there. He's had to pump all the damage into this. And he couldn't bust through, so he just chose to kill my magic student. So this is where the game gets fun. 
I can now duplicate cards in my hand. And it's of utmost importance that I duplicate removal. Because my deck doesn't have a lot of removal, and this is the only way I can get more. So if you're noticing, I have way more cards than this guy. Uh, and I should probably be pumping out orders pretty soon. So, the duplicate keyword allows me to copy units that are in my hand. Now the doppelganger has replicate, which allows me to copy units that are on the field. Note that it doesn't have to be my field, I can copy off of his side too. So that's pretty good. Um, I should probably be using orders. What am I scared of? Now going to the rear, he usually can't do anything. Both of these units don't have range and there's units blocking their attacks. So... I'm only scared of orders, but he only has two orbs. But that's not that good. Hmm, this is tough. I only have one action point left. All right, we're gonna wanna negate some orders. Now that I have the doppelganger out, I can actually use this mastermind because I can just copy this mastermind. All right, that's good. Let's set this trap. He won't know what that is. Do all my units die? He just swapped his um, doppelganger with another doppelganger. Okay, that cancels his order. Oh, that was pretty good. Okay, so he played the Overlord order. And the Overlord order costs two orbs. So he lost an action point and two orbs for my one action point and one orb. So that's a big tempo swing for me. Ha! Huh. He's positioned his units in a very unique way. So it's on my switch. I, so usually at this point in time, my deck would want to s revive these guys and then summon a bunch of attackers here so that during the next turn, while he has nothing in front of him, I can utterly just destroy his field and kill his leader or something. But I can't do that since my attacks are targeted at random. So... The intelligent play would be to find a way to block myself. I can do that next turn. So let's prepare for that. Let's clear this corpse. And let's play this order here. And let's use this spell to kill one of these. So I can either kill the illusionist or the doppelganger. What's scarier? It's the doppelganger. Doppelgangers are so good, you have to get rid of them as soon as you can. Okay, and that's the doppelganger gone. So usually he'd be able to like heal or something, but since I'm second player, he doesn't get that privilege. That's a dead unit. All right. So I'm gonna have to summon a fighter here so that I can defend myself. That's scary. So the summoner has a spell called unsummon, ironic, uh, but it doesn't work on units that have intercept. So I should be safe. So I should draw. Lightning Elemental. Oh, that's so good. So I can Lightning Elemental his back row, or I can Lightning Elemental this. I can prevent four damage just by killing that Illusionist. Um, yeah, I should do that. So I can play it as an order, or I can just summon it and use its keyword, which is Swift. Swift is a keyword that it's basically like haste and magic. You can attack immediately, and the attack doesn't even cost us action points. So I made a mistake here. I forgot I was fighting against Eric, and now it's gonna get targeted randomly. So actually, if I hit Eric or the Illusionist, I'm fine. Hitting this is the bad one. So here's hoping. Oh, that was the bad one. Ah. All right, that was a misplay on my part, but we'll see if I suffer a bit too much from that. Oh, he's gonna polymorph something. Huh. Did he choose to not polymorph anything? So the AI sometimes does really interesting and seemingly unoptimal plays, but from my experience, it seems that uh, the AI works off this thing where it's not always trying to play optimally, especially because it is easy mode, so... I guess that's how they do their balancing. Well, that, I, I mean, I know that's how we do our balancing. So here's a cool move. I can do this and do uh, replicate uh, my fighter, which should push through if my internet... Yes, there we go. I thought my internet had 
dissolve. And then I can use this to duplicate that fighter I just replicated. So now I have two fighters in my hand again. It's pretty good. And then I can use it I can use it here and clear off that. All right. I should end my turn. Banish one. Okay, hope it's not. Oh, it was a combo piece. All right. Okay, his turn wasn't that scary. You can do this. Damage yourself. Lancer. That kills that unit. And I'll have a lot of cards in my hand, so let's draw. That's his turn on the switch. Okay. It seems that this guy's running out of units, and that's pretty good. So a good play here is actually to just attack. So whether or not they hit this or this, it's pretty good. Because my next plan is to clear this corpse and then summon my lightning elemental. So hopefully the plan is to hit this. Okay, that's good. RNG is in my favor. Counter one is nothing to me. Clear. Now with this, I either kill the illusionist or the curse knight guaranteed. So. Um, that's pretty good. Hopefully, it's the Curse Knight. Yes! Alright. Doing good, doing good. Alright, that was expected. Alright. I'll probably take this opportunity to replicate my lightning elemental. Then I'll duplicate my lightning elemental. Lightning elemental is pretty good, just in case you guys didn't know. Okay, and this is a good opportunity. So this, I've been saving this for my combo, but my combo looks like it's not gonna happen. So I might as well use this. Again, uh, inspire is a keyword that makes me randomly attack something. So either I attack the illusionist or I attack Eric. Either way, it's a good deal for me. Okay, I attack Eric. So my plan in the rear wave is to use Reflector to backlash this, clear both of these incoming corpses, and then double lightning elemental attack him. And that should deal 12. So, um... Yeah, hopefully that works. Okay. I think I win. So, if we had summoned it in any other place, it would have been a win for him. Or rather, it wouldn't be a guaranteed win for me, uh, because the randomness would make me attack one of them. But the randomness only works if I have legal targets. So say I kill this illusionist, I only have Arik left in the front. This one's in the back. So if all of my units are melee, they can't actually hit the healer, which means they have to attack Arik. Because again, your attacks are targeted at random, but it has to be a legal target. So I think this means I win. Clear that corpse. Clear this corpse. Okay. And... End turn. Okay. It's my end of turn phase, and now... Alright. So see, I will attack. It will not be targeted at random. Well, it's targeted at random, but there's only one target. Then lightning elemental. And another lightning elemental. So unless Eric has a heal, he's dead. So this is the way uh, Pixel Tactics Online works. Just because my enemy leader is at zero doesn't mean they die immediately. Um, they can still use orders that heal them. There's a lot of orders that heal the leader. Uh, so we'll see where they can go. Oh, just in case you guys didn't know, 
Uh, as an action, Malandrax can discard a random card and gain an orb. I haven't had to use that, but if ever you're in a situation where you need to cast a lot of spells, it's pretty good. Uh, sorry, cast a lot of orders. So let's see if he has a card. Alright. Nope. And I win! So there's no cool victory theme yet. Uh, it's still in closed pre-alpha test, so product can change. So I have unlocked uh, stage 2 hard, and the stage 2 1 challenge, and stage 2 2 easy. And you have unlocked the illusionist card. So here's, here's the thing, in Pixel Tactics Online, the way you unlock new cards is by beating the player versus environment or PvE content. So beating all of these is what unlocks you new leaders, what unlocks you new cards to play with. Of course, we're in pre-alpha, so I have all the cards so that I can test them because I can't test them otherwise. So yeah, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoyed me beating World 2-1. Uh, and in the next video, I will try to beat the next one, which is World 2-2. Two. Two. So um, thank you so much for watching and don't forget your leader abilities. And thank you so much. Good night.